Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to be looking at a coal-fired power station. I'm going to show you all of the systems that make up a coal-fired power station and how they work together in order that a coal-fired power station can generate electricity. By the end of the video, you'll know all of the major systems that we require in order that a coal-fired power station can function correctly. We'll cover the fuel system, the water system, the steam system, the electrical system, and also the exhaust gas system as well. So by the end of the video, you really will know exactly how a coal-fired power station works. So let's get started with an overview of a power station and its main systems. I say main systems because there are a lot of systems that make up a coal-fired power station. They all work together to produce electricity. But you have major and minor systems and we're looking at the major systems. The first thing we're going to need when we build a coal-fired power station is coal. The idea is that we burn fuel to release chemical energy that we can use to heat up water and create steam. So we can see we've got a ship on the left hand side of this diagram. The ship is delivering coal. We will unload the coal from the ship and then we'll use a stacker to stack the coal up in a coal yard or perhaps a coal dome or generally just a storage area. Now we're going to be storing thousands and thousands of tons of coal in this area. So we've got to organize the coal yard or the storage area so we're not using up more space than we actually require. Once the coal has been stacked, we're going to need to reclaim it. And that essentially means that whereas we drop the coal off before into the coal yard, we're now going to pick the coal up again and start feeding it towards the power station. The reason we have a coal yard in the first place is because sometimes we may not be able to get deliveries through to the power station. So they will store a lot of coal, sometimes enough for three or four months, and we'll gradually feed the coal then to the power station without having to worry that we're going to run out of coal. After we've reclaimed some of the coal from the coal yard, we'll send it to a silo, often termed a day silo, and we'll feed the coal from the day silo to a coal pulverizer. The idea of the pulverizer is that we can pulverize the coal in order to get very fine coal dust. Inside the pulverizer, we're also going to dry the coal out using air, called primary air, from a force draft fan. We're going to take this air from a preheater so that the air is quite hot, and then we'll force it into the pulverizer, and as the coal is ground up into small molecules, we'll also dry it out using this air. We'll use the same air for combustion because it's going to get blown into the boiler along with the coal. So we've got our coal dust leaving the pulverizer. It's being blown pneumatically from the pulverizer to the boiler. When we get to the boiler, we're going to ignite that coal and we're going to get combustion. So that is our fuel system. We may also use oil to fire the boiler, at least initially, or natural gas, which is predominantly methane gas. It all depends on the design of the boiler itself. The type of boiler we're using is a water tube boiler. Whenever you need a lot of steam at very high pressures, you're going to be using a water tube boiler. Steam turbines require steam at very high pressures and that's why we use water tube boilers. But water tube boilers also generate a lot of steam. They're very large. They can be greater than 40, 50, 60 meters in height. And these are the boilers that power stations in the power generation industry always use. So let's have a look at our water circuit now because it's water that gets fed to the boiler in order to generate steam. We've got a makeup water inlet. The makeup water feeds to a deaerator. When we talk about makeup water we're essentially talking about the water that's added to the system and then treated before it becomes boiler feed water. You can't just take water from a city grid or from a lake or a river and put it into a water tube boiler. That's not going to work. You're going to have a lot of corrosion and a lot of problems. So this makeup water has to be treated chemically and mechanically and we do that quite often in a deaerator. The deaerator is going to reduce the oxygen content and the CO2 content of the water 
And before the water gets to the deaerator, it's going to be filtered, etc., to take out those particles that might be floating around in the water. Then we'll go to a boiler feed water pump. This is usually a multi-stage centrifugal pump. And we will increase the pressure of our boiler feed water and send it to our water tube boiler. The pressures involved here are actually quite high. You're looking at in excess of 200 bar, which is in excess of around 3000 PSI. The water will be pumped to an economizer where we'll preheat the water a little bit before we send it to the main body of the water tube boiler. So the economizer is a nice way of preheating the water before we send it into the main part of the boiler to really start heating it up a lot more. We don't want to feed cold water into the main part of the boiler or the furnace as we call it because if we do that then we're going to thermal shock the boiler and that could mean that we have cracked pipes etc. I've run out of time in this video but in our next video I'm going to show you a coal fire power station in 3D and then I'm going to load up separate 3D models of all of the major components associated with a coal-fired power station. And I'm going to show you each of these 3D models so you can understand exactly how the power station works and how each individual component works as well. If you want to learn more about steam or boilers, valves, pumps or anything else related to industrial engineering, then check out our website. You can find a link in the video description area. We've got over 30 hours of engineering video tutorials, much like this one. Our technical encyclopedia has over 100,000 words and hundreds of articles. We've also got quizzes and apps which will support you as you learn more and more about engineering. And don't forget you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks very much for your time.